What is going on guys? Aaron here, back again with another Curls in the Rack DIY video. Uh, this time we're going to be restoring some plates. I apologize, first off my voice is a little raspy, I think it's allergies, something in the air, who knows. But uh, we're going to do some restoration of iron plates today. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Uh, easiest way would probably be just to take a can of spray paint to them and uh, maybe use some chemicals to remove some of the rust or uh, you know paint remover to remove the old paint and then repaint them. But the reason that I didn't go that route, is, and I have done that in the past, is because uh, when you spray paint something, uh, it tends to just chip right away. You know, you, you knock it on something, you, you slide it over a barbell, it just, it chips. So what I did was I powder coated these ones, but I took three different approaches when I powder coated them. Uh, one, I didn't do anything. Uh, two, I went ahead and I sanded it uh, with a, you know, high grit uh, sander. Uh, and then the third one is I took my grinder with a, with a you know, a little bit more coarse of a, of a uh, attachment on there and I did that. So I'm going to show you the results on all of them and you might be surprised at the results. So uh, let me go ahead and show you the first plate. Okay guys, so first, before I go ahead and show you all of the plates and the different methods I use to get to the desired results, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you that all the links to everything you're gonna need for this project, uh, whether it be the, the paint for the top of the lettering, whether it be the powder coating, all that stuff, I'll have links in the description. So if you wanna click down there uh, when you're done, if you decide you wanna do this, then that is where you can find everything. Um, so the reason that you might wanna do this um, and I already said less scratching, it kind of lubricates the inside of the, um, where you're going to slide onto your sleeve of your barbell. Uh, and you know what? It's just more professional. There's a reason that companies don't spray paint stuff and then send it out. Or most companies, they want their product to last. And so if you're going to put the time in to do this, uh, and you want them, you know, to look aesthetically pleasing in your garage gym or wherever, uh, this is why you might want to just go this route instead of spray painting it. You're not going to have to re-spray paint it, you know. Anyways, I'll stop rambling. Let's go through the plates. Plate number one. This is the plate I spent the most time on. It's the smallest one, but I spent the most time on it just because I used a fine grit sander. When you use a fine grit sander, you, you know, you're going to have to slowly go over it. I did the sides. I did everything. And what that yielded was a very smooth looking plate. Everything is super smooth. Uh, the sides are smooth, the front smooth. I didn't get in this portion just because I didn't have a tool and it really wasn't that big of a deal to me. Uh, but it took a lot longer to use that fine grit sander than uh, the grinder. Now, I used the grinder on this guy, okay? I did this portion, this portion, the sides, the back, and it looks really good too and super smooth. Uh, and then I also did a two-tone on this one. And I'll go through exactly how I made this into a two-tone version uh, in the footage here in a minute, so you can do that for yourself if you want to do that as well. Now, the third one, I didn't do anything to it. I was like, well, let me see what happens if I just go ahead and powder coat right over the top of this other plate. And it actually, it looks pretty cool, and it has a more of a textured look to it because the paint before was textured on here. So it looks... Smooth on the back, just because that's how it was on the back. Now, there was some uh, rust flakes that you do want to make sure that you remove before you powder coat, because if you powder coat over the top of them, they're just going to chip right off, and uh, you're going to have to re-powder coat anyways. But this was super easy, and I think it turned out pretty well. So why don't I go ahead and get to the rest of the footage, and then I'll voice over it when uh, I think it's something necessary to mention to you guys and uh, show you all the stuff that you're going to need for this and uh, you can decide if you wanna do this for yourself. All right, so in order to powder coat, you are gonna need an oven that's big enough to put these guys in, okay? The oven's over there, I'll show a picture of it on the screen here, and I'll show you a link where you can get it. Uh, I found the cheapest one from Walmart that I could find, and it's worked great. I've done a ton of powder coating in it, and so uh, it worked really well. Now, the other thing you're gonna need is also the powder coating system. I also have a link in the description, but this is the one I used here, and uh, it so far, I've done a ton of projects with it, and it's worked 
great. Uh, you are also going to need your powder. So you can get uh, black, you can get red, you can get blue, you can get whatever color you want. I'll have links to uh, everything in the description and I got them all on Amazon. Everything here you can get on Amazon, except for the oven, uh, but you can get a different oven on there if you want. Uh, they were just a little bit more expensive. Another thing you're gonna need is these gloves because if you don't care about getting the powder on your hands, that's fine, but when you pick this up, anything that you have on your hands, oils, will stick to it and they will show up after it's powder coated and it will look bad. So, not the end of the world, you can always re-powder coat it. That's what's great about this is if you screw up on one or some of the powder falls off or whatever, uh, you can just either wipe it off before you powder coat it or you can decide, I'll just do another one, uh, powder coating session in the oven after that. Another thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need hooks because you're gonna need to hang these guys up and we need to electrically charge this with the powder coating system and that is what makes the powder stick to it. And uh, then you can put it into the oven a little bit easier without the paint or the powder falling off of it. So you're gonna need to hang them up with these hooks and you don't wanna touch the project afterwards. Uh, another thing that's optional, but it works well on certain situations. You'll, you can see, I'll show in the footage why I didn't necessarily uh, like these or use them, uh, but it's high temperature tape. So if you use this, you can go over portions that you don't want to have the powder on or that you already powder coated. So it basically protects them in the oven from uh, one color powder getting onto the other one. But I didn't find that these worked very well. They were kind of hard to put on, uh, especially on rounded stuff and inside diameter kind of fell off a little bit. Uh, but you can also use painter's tape and then just peel that off before you put it in the oven very carefully, obviously. Now, another thing you're gonna want is you are going to want one of these plugs here. Because if you're doing these, this is a two diameter uh, it starts out at two and then gets bigger, but you're going to want it to sit on here like this. So you can actually powder coat one side and then after this one's done, after you slide it into the oven, put it on a tray, that way you don't even need to use the hook here. Uh, and then you can flip it over and you can do the other side because you don't want it to touch anything because as you can see here, I did this one on a grate and you can see the lines, okay? So don't throw it in on something because it will create grooves in your plate. Get one of these instead. The next thing, and this is what I used for doing the two tones here, okay? So I had, I had done the blue on the inside first, right? And then I took these guys. It's just a piece of cardboard that I cut out and then I put two magnets on here so it would stick, right? So once that stuck to there, I could put also, same deal here, four magnets on the outside. Once I did that, I could re-powder coat the inside blue because what happened was uh, when I did, the inside portion, if this is what I used, a piece of foam, and I did the red, it did it, it it had little grooves on it and this is when I used that that high temperature tape. It still allowed some of the powder to go through. So I would recommend using painter's tape. You can get its nice seal on there and then you can take it, take this guy off, take the tape off, take the tape off here, and then put it in. But if you screw up, it's not the end of the world. You're just gonna have to do another round of powder coating. So that's why I came up with these guys to protect it a little bit better and then it that worked really well. So let's go ahead and get to the footage so you can actually see what I've done because sometimes people are better at watching something rather than listening to somebody talk and think they have it. So let's roll. All right guys, so here we are on round one of the plate restoration process and I kind of went back to this option in the last run because as you'll notice, it makes quick work using a grinder and I think it's like 120 grit uh, sander disc on there. It makes quick work of taking off the paint and the primer. Hey 
And you can see on the second plate here where I showcase where the paint had been chipped off from being thrown on to the bar, clanking against other plates. Uh, so I just went ahead and just got rid of all that stuff just so it would be nice and flush and we could start over fresh on this plate. Then you go ahead and, uh, and clean this guy. Uh, you can do two coats of cleaning on here. That's what I do each time. I coat them, I leave them for about a minute and a half. Uh, you don't want it to dry back on there because you're removing the grease and the dirt and it's a stuff called TSP. That's what I use on my other project and it works great to just remove any of the debris. You wanna use gloves at this point because you uh, don't wanna get any oils from your hand on there because that will mess up your powder coating. And after those go ahead and dry fully, the next step is we are going to be putting our powder inside of the powder coating system and we are gonna spray. You wanna use about 20 PSI on this thing uh, and you're gonna to need to hook it obviously to compressor. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything big or fancy since we're only putting out 20 PSI. Anything you have or can find cheap will do the trick. And after you go ahead and make sure you get every nook and cranny, we're gonna go ahead and throw them into the oven. Now, it doesn't really matter if you screw up or don't get something, you're just gonna have to uh, do it over again. Now, as you can see, I threw this thing right on the rack. And what I showed you at the beginning of the video uh, was just the fact that it's gonna leave grooves and lines because it's, uh, you know, it's a five pound weight and it's pushing down. Uh, so not the best option. In this second round, I use a hook. Next thing you're gonna do is use this paint set. Now this paint set, these paint pens I got on Amazon for 10 bucks. I'll leave the link in the description. They work fantastic. They show up, vibrant colors, really easy to work with, shake them up, push the tip down a little bit till the paint goes on the tip and you can write with them. The only thing you need to do is keep a steady hand. Make sure you go over everything. Uh, if you do get some on where you don't want it, you can go ahead and take a little bit of goo on or if you wipe it real quick with a, a tissue or a baby wipe or something like that, then you should be good to go. Okay, so for round two, or the second set of plates that I decided to do, I wanted to do something a little bit different, and I wanted to see if I could use a really fine grit sander and just get the paint off. Not really even necessarily get the primer off, just get it flush. And as you can see, this took a really long time to do, and it didn't really yield any better results so I used a little hand tool that I had, a little Makita, and then I went to my regular sander, and it just, it, it just took a really long time, and it pretty much looked the same when I was done. Uh, maybe a little bit more flush, uh, but uh, I would not recommend going this route. But that being said, if you don't have a grinder or access to one, then obviously you're gonna have to do it like that. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. Uh, you can also use solvents and paint removers and rust removers and all those sorts of chemicals. I just personally didn't wanna buy any of that stuff.
And after I was finished with all of the sanding, I went ahead and powder coated these guys. Now, these ones I made red. As you can see, the red, it got everywhere. And this is why you definitely are gonna wanna wear a mask in there because you're gonna be breathing in that stuff. So, can't really do it outside because if you get a gust of wind, uh, you know, the, it won't go on the project. Uh, but just please be safe. Don't breathe this stuff in. And as you can see, I did not go ahead and just slap it down onto the tray this time. I learned my lesson from the first round and I hung it up with the hook. Now, what I did was I cut one of the hooks in half and there was a little bit of a, uh, a like a grill for an air fryer at the top of this. I bent it around there, kept that in while I was preheating it, and then I was able to carefully transfer it from one hook to the other and then powder coat it. That worked pretty well. Okay, so as I said before, my third attempt, I didn't do anything. I just cleaned them. So I didn't grind off any of, any of the paint, any of the rust. I just merely flaked off and wiped off uh, the backside. As you can see here, this is kind of what they looked like before I started on the project. There's still paint on them. I think I had previously spray painted these ones. But then I went ahead and powder coated these and then popped them in and uh, saw the results. It, it looked good and it just has more of a textured finish to it. All right, and round four, uh, what I did to remove the lettering is I went ahead and I hit it with a wire brush that I use when I'm welding uh, to get the, um, the slag off. And that actually worked pretty well. I just went really lightly over all the letters uh, that came right out because I wasn't gonna really touch the inside of this plate because I can really only reach certain spots and then those will make the other spots that I didn't get look weird. So I decided just let, let's keep it all the same and just remove the paint on it. And after I was done with the letters, I went ahead and hit the backside, the sides, the top lip in the middle, top lip on the outside with the grinder, uh, and it made pretty quick work of it. Okay, so the two-tone plate. I will admit that that did take quite a bit longer just because if I was gonna do it, I was gonna get it right and there wasn't gonna be any bleed over or anything. So first of all, like I mentioned before in the beginning of the video, I had that high heat tape. So you can see me here putting it on, uh, it kind of pulls off when you try to get other spots. So that was kind of a pain. This is at 300, so you can imagine uh, how long this took. So after I did my initial powder coating with the blue, I then put the tape on there and uh, I put this piece of foam in there and I tried to do the red. So some of it bled through, that's why I had to do a third round of powder coating the blue on the inside that you'll see in a minute here. But um, it, it worked better just to use painter's tape. And this foam piece that I cut out for the middle portion of it actually worked pretty well. My um, my one screw up is that I left it too thick. So um, because it was too thick, I wasn't able to get some of the side edges on the inside. So that's why I had to go back and then do another round of the red after that. You can even kind of see in this picture on that right hand side where, where there's still bare metal. But the cool thing about the powder coating is that if some of it gets onto the spots that you don't want it to, you can just remove it uh, with your finger or with a cloth and just get rid of it before you uh, heat it up. And so here is me redoing the red after I shaved down that thing so I could see the edges. And I used painter's tape this time.
And if you do decide to clip it, like I did, uh, and you have to take it off to do the spot underneath the clip, it's okay. Uh, you can do it like that. So what I did is I just kind of touched the metal to the bottom portion of it, so that way it still made contact. And after that was done, it was time to do the bottom portion of it. I just used that piece of foam that I cut out the original hole from and put that over so I wouldn't get any paint underneath that accidentally go up into where the blue was. Uh, so it kind of protected it and made like a seal. After I removed the piece of foam, I then very lightly did the sides. And if you'll notice here in the video, showing you that some of the red bled through on the sides and on the middle portion of it, so I had to fix that. Now, I thought I'd get clever, use magnets, and uh, so they, they'd uh, sit tightly onto the metal, which worked well except when it was time to take it off. So I decided on the second plate that I was gonna do, I would tape them on there. So same concept, but they're not gonna fall off onto my project. And then just like the other one, I did the lettering with uh, those same pens and uh, worked really well. That's all the time I have for the video today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you know, you learned something and you can decide if you want to do this for yourself. If you don't, it's fine. Spray paint works good too. Uh, but on the next video, I am going to take a break from doing all this DIY stuff. Uh, I got a lot of new products that came in and so I'm gonna go ahead and start with more product reviews. So uh, make sure you subscribe, the like button if you like the video and uh, until next time, peace.